And uh, I use the, I do use graphics, uh, the trend graphics, as you as you will see, I guess, um, to show longer term trends like this one. This happens to be Bainbridge Island waterfront. You can see what the inventory looks like versus the the uh, pending and, and sold activity. Pretty dismal. And this is relatively recent. That was I think last late last fall. Uh, and then talk about the five-year trends for their specific uh, area. And this particular slide is uh, Hood Canal Waterfront from uh, 2006 through uh, the first half of 2010. And you can see it kind of wanders around. These it's interesting. Everybody asks me, well, what happened here? Well, unfortunately, there were two sales, uh, actually three sales that kind of during those two time periods, six month periods, that kind of screwed up the averages. We had three million dollar plus waterfront sales on the canal in that time period. For me that was nice because two of the three were mine, so I really mm -hmm. don't that, but, but uh, that kind of skewed the, the statistics. So, and, and it's important that you know that well enough so that you're not caught blindsided, you know, and and can't have, don't have an explanation as to what the anomaly uh, represents. Okay, talk about the property, its condition. Uh, it, and Sunny will, will appreciate this. You know, it's just sticks and bricks. It doesn't have any golden nails in it. You know, the, the, the really nice biking range, and the overall scope of things, adds very little, you know, other than the fact that, you know, you got a nice stainless steel and maybe it'll add $500 to the price. What? Well, yeah, right, exactly, good point. And, and, I can't stress enough that that's all the properties are. That, you, know, you may, and the other thing that I learned very early, and I screwed up very badly and, and heard a good friend of mine, he had a really cute waterfront property in Savannah. It was done as well as you possibly could do a, like a 1935 house, and guest house and house buildings and so on. And I really liked it, so I got caught up in you know how nice it was and when I talked to Brenda about the price all she did was shake her head at me and, and sure enough I and then I had to go back to him very shortly and say you know I think I got carried away we need to reduce the, the price he wasn't real happy and then you know in this in that particular case it was a fairly short market time it was kind of one of these that, you know we had in the mid 90s if some of you recall uh, and we missed the market on it. So he wound up selling it at the bottom of the market as opposed to the top where it should have been sold if I had done my job properly. So, yeah. Um, the importance of pricing it right. You know, price is really the, I know somebody said price is the ultimate amenity. I'm not really clear on exactly what that means other than everything boils down to everything is price. You know, so location is price, the condition is price, etc. I have one right now. I have out on Harbor View in, in uh, Miller Bay Estates, and they don't get it. You know, I told them, I said, look, you're going to be looking at ten to $15,000 less if you don't get these things cleaned up. They got them sort of done, but we're still, I'm still fighting that battle every day. Randy Kaplan went in, and she'd done a so-so job of cleaning, and it, it wasn't cluttered, um, except she left the cat and cat box in, Cat forgot to use the cat box, and then the seller got in there and made it to the top of the stairs as a split, so you didn't even get a full flight of stairs before she turned around and walked out of the house. That's going to wind up costing them twenty-five thousand dollars, guaranteed. Wow. And you know, for an extra, you know, two hours of work for the place. Um, and, and impressions are really important. Your first impression and your last impression. And so the front door and the front yard, you know, is tremendously because that's the first thing that people see and that's the last thing they see. And so preparation of the property is really important unless you want to take it the year on the back end when the inspection comes in or, you know, whatever. We can go out into your office <coughs> or anything. All right, what the process is, I don't have to tell you folks what this is. <coughs> go through the market evaluation phase, comparative analysis, which is different we'll talk about in a bit. Listing considerations, if, you know, if it's got two lots, we're going to market it with or without the second lot, uh, that sort of thing. Put together a marketing plan based on the marketing strategy for that property, not some generic one. 
Uh, get it listed for sale, listen to the feedback and make adjustments, uh, go through the offer of negotiation and hopefully we bring it to closing. Um, take work I'll leave behind, you can read that as easily as I can say it. Uh, okay, so that was the first step. The next step then is to come back and go through the property analysis, talk about the property strengths and its weaknesses, what do we want to market to, and what do we want to obviate. You don't want to, to the extent you can, misdirect somebody uh, about something that they can't afford to fix. As an example, and I've found very early that if they have a really bad carpet, I mean really bad carpet, but they don't have the money to, to, to put it in, put it, get an estimate from a reputable, you know, uh, carpet place, get the samples of what that estimate represented, and put it in the front door so they see it. I did that in a couple of Gallup pines that it had been on the market previously and you couldn't sell it, the carpets weren't stretched, they were dirty, worn, etc. Um, I put that in and, and shortly after it went on the market, we got a we got a full price offer because we said in the in the offer is an allowance for the carpet. You know, in this case we deducted $3,500 Talk about the preparation requirements um, and what they'll do and what they won't do if impacts price and I try and, to the best of my ability, guesstimate what that impact is. I generally probably exaggerated a bit so they really have a, you know, an appreciation that you know, they can stand to lose some real money if they don't do what they should do. And then I talk about the analysis assumptions that, you know, that I've made when I'm doing this, i.e. We've done all these things that I said. We did the, you know, we pumped the septic. Uh, if there are some issues, which I'll get to. Um, sorry. Answers to questions. Evaluation. I really want to evaluate the, their motivation, evaluate the preparation and condition of the property, uh, evaluate the market position, and that is vis-a-vis -vis other that they're vis-a-vis -vis their competition, and then identify any potential issues that, that are there, uh, you know, that might affect the financeability of it. Take a look at their finances because they may be underwater, and nothing I can do can get them out whole. Um, you know. Prep them to have the septic inspected and uh, pumped if need be. You know, talk about any, any structure issues that might be there and if you're on an high bank clay, get a cheap tech. I mean, probably don't want to be a technical in that case, but um, talk about that. Um, okay, the market analysis basically, I go over with them the homes that are currently for sale, where I see them lying within that number of properties and what their direct competition will be. I talk about the, the sold pending properties, and again, contrast theirs with them so they have an understanding of, okay, this is what something, we don't know what they closed for, but we know that whatever they offered and agreed to, you know, it's what somebody was willing to pay for a house that looks like this in this location, in this condition, and then sold and closed, and I emphasize that's what we know somebody was willing to pay. So there's no point in doing like the Jefferson County agents and compare. I cannot believe I have gone in dozens of times and, and asked them, went over the sold and closed as the comparables, and they said, how come my agent didn't tell me about that? So what did she use to tell you, I'm sorry, what did they use to tell you where you rank? And they said, well, they showed us what these others were on the market for. And I asked myself, what the? I know that the three that you're talking about, the one is at least a million dollars high. And she asked, I said, so how did you compare? She said, well, yours isn't, isn't quite the same uh, quality as that, so you know we need to make it instead of 2.3 million, we need to make yours a million. So, anyway, <laughs> what somebody is willing to pay is demonstrated best by sold and closed next best by pending and if, and again if you have good agents relationships you can call up the agent most times you know and 
they'll, if, if not, come out and tell you what the agreed to price is. They'll give you a pretty strong hint as to where it is, which will help you. And they can also talk to you about you know, any additional considerations that would be important to know, you know like seller concessions or whatever. <coughs> this is an example, again, going back to Shine. <laughs> That's what was on the market when I talked about it. This is the sales activity, current sales. And these are the two that were sold and closed. The two that were sold and closed over a year. What? Oh, you go over a year back? Or you yeah, I think, to go over a year back? Uh, this was in, yeah, I, wanted, I think I had to go back wherever I was in that year and then a full year behind to find anything to close. Jefferson County isn't looking any better than this right now. That's pretty much what's going on. So they, hopefully if the seller's got any intelligence at all, they can see that at the current absorption rate, there's about 10 years worth of inventory out there. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, all right, and then the comparative analysis. And I do this probably different than I think any other agent around. Early on, um, as Frank has stressed, I really like statistics and I like numbers and numbers which you make numbers say anything you want them to say, but uh, numbers have a, a good, solid credibility when you're standing in front of somebody. Uh, I remember when I used to do the budget for the hotel company, and, you know, be four million eight hundred and three hundred and sixty-three dollars, eight hundred, four million eight hundred thousand, eight hundred, three hundred and sixty-three, whatever. Uh, now, and my boss would say. Give that stupid those numbers to the you know to the right of the four million eight out of there because they're going to hold you to those numbers. If you give them four million eight, then it's you know plus or minus. So that there is a lot of strength in giving them specific numbers. And I've only had one person argue with me, and it happened to be the civilian head of keyboard, a doctor engineer, hmm? PhD type engineer. And I told him, I said, well, you know, he said, well, how do you know this? And I said, well, how do you know when the gyros aren't working on a torpedo? You know, you're not getting telemetry back, so how do you know? I said, well, because they don't go where they're supposed to go. I said, well, this doesn't fall in the range that it's supposed to fall. So the price, whatever. All right, so what I do is I contrast the, the best comparable sold homes that we have, and I really hate, I mean, Kitsap County is the worst place in the world to try and do this for everything but the stuff in Miller Bay States, any water states. Because there aren't any. You can go down the same stretch of waterfront for the same view properties. You got a manufactured home, you know, a cabin that was built in 1942, you know, and Dr. So-and-so's four million dollar structure, all in the same relative area. Pretty tough to draw any conclusions from those. But you know, you've got to you've got to learn. I, I worked with several appraisers builders, etc., to come up with the adjustment factors, and appraisers have a, a hard, fast set of numbers that they use. Fortunately, we're not stuck with something like that, so we can you know, be a little bit more adventurous with that. Um, but it, it gives me a range, and then I can you know, kind of see where they should be relative to what their competition is, and you know, how they look compared to whatever it's on. Establish a market value range and just tell them, depending on how motivated you are, you know, this probably will sell much more quickly than if you put it out like this. You know? And if they get too extravagant, then I don't want to deal with it because I can't afford it. Um, but you find if you give a good logical explanation to people, by and large, they will listen to you. They may not, you know, they may not go all the way down to the bottom, but they'll shift them where they were coming from, from way at the top to a lot more close to where you would like them to be. Terry, do you give a time frame when you're giving them the value? Do you give like, here's your 30-day price, here's your 69 You know, I have had clients say, give me, give me a price where it will sell before the end of the month. And I would tell everybody until the day I die, I don't know what the hell that price I know I can give you a price, but it would be a ludicrous one because I wouldn't want to be wrong. You know, so it'd be 40% under where it should be instead of 10% under where it should be or whatever. You know, I don't know. You know uh, so no, I never do. I, I try and stay 